Shalom, dearest brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this week's episode of Midweek with the Saints. We are at episode 22 of this wonderful series on the lives of the saints. And before I begin, I would like to ask each of you who are viewing right now to click on the like and subscribe buttons if you are watching on YouTube. Please also click on the bell button so that you will be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. If you're watching on Instagram, please click on the follow button on my Instagram TV account. And friends, if you're watching on Spotify, click the follow button. And wherever you're watching, I have a humble request to all of you to just share this podcast with whoever you believe can benefit from it. Friends, just a quick announcement at the very start of this podcast as well. We'll be taking a break for the Holy Week, which is happening next week. So we will not be uploading any episodes on the lives of saints. But we will resume the episode number 23 on the week right after Holy Week. So on that note, I'd like to wish all of you a blessed Holy Week. May this Holy Week be a life-changing one as we join our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in His passion, death and resurrection. So brothers and sisters in Christ, today we are going to take a look at the life of God's own doorkeeper. The saint that is famously known as the doorkeeper. Saint Andre of Montreal. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, who is this Saint Andre of Montreal? I would like to just share with you all a little background story of this wonderful saint, a humble saint, a saint who was willing to do the small things and be faithful in the small things so that God could use him mightily for the building of his kingdom here on earth. By the time Saint Andre, or rather at that point, Alfred, Before he became a brother, he was known as Alfred. By the time he was 12 years old, he had lost both of his parents to different diseases. And therefore, he started to live with his uncle who took him under his care. But he had to take up a lot of odd jobs. He had to work in the farm, in different shops, etc. However, Saint Andre, at that time Alfred, was a very sickly boy. So he could not sustain himself in these various jobs. Over time, he started to develop this love for Jesus Christ. And his desire to join a religious order, ultimately he joined a religious order consisting of brothers and this congregation is known as the Holy Cross of Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Alfred ultimately joined this order and his road to joining this order was a tough one. Firstly, the brothers suspected that he was in it because he was desperate to survive. He did not actually have a vocation to join the brothers, but he was just desperate to survive. Since he could not find work outside because he was sickly, they thought he was trying to escape from the world by joining the the brothers in this congregation. But truth be told, Alfred at that time and Andre once he professed his final vows, truly had a vocation. And they ultimately let him in and allowed him to undergo training, carrying on performing different tasks that the brothers typically would. And in the process of this training, the brothers felt that he was just too sickly to be part of their congregation. But his desire was so strong that he appealed to the to a visiting bishop that he really wanted to be in this congregation and profess his final vows as a brother. Ultimately, this bishop managed to convince the brothers in the congregation. And upon his final profession, they assigned him to this job. Upon completing his novitiate and making his final profession, they assigned him as the doorkeeper of the College of Notre Dame in Montreal. So brothers and sisters in Christ, he was assigned as a doorkeeper. And St. Andre of Montreal used to joke, you know, at the end of my novitiate, they showed me the door and I stayed there for 40 years. (laughs) They actually assigned him to be the doorkeeper of the college. But he jokes as he says that at the end of my novitiate, they showed me the door, the way out, and I stayed there for 40 years. Friends, he was faithful to God as God's own doorkeeper. As the doorkeeper, he had many tasks to carry out, many errands to run throughout the day, but chiefly, he was there to welcome guests and to direct them to the people that they were there to meet. Friends, ultimately, he directed everybody that he came across to Jesus Christ, through St. Joseph. Yes, brothers and sisters, this is the year dedicated to St. Joseph. And guess what? Just as this illustration suggests, St. Andre of Montreal had this great sense of devotion to St. Joseph. And of course, ultimately, a love for Jesus Christ. 
St. Andre pointed us to St. Joseph, all those who came to the doors of this college. He not only pointed them to whomever they were there to visit, but he pointed them to Jesus through St. Joseph. Friends, over time, St. Andre of Montreal, as the doorkeeper, became famous for this reason. He used to perform miracles. He would pray over them and he would apply ointment on them. And he would pray for healing with expectant faith and they would receive healing in the name of Jesus Christ through the intercessions of St. Joseph. Now his superiors started to become suspicious. The diocesan head started to become suspicious. A lot of people were not giving him the benefit of the doubt in carrying out the healing ministry of Jesus Christ through the intercessions of St. Joseph. But any glory or honor that he got from these works of healing, he attributed all of it to the intercessions of St. Joseph. He said it was St. Joseph who interceded for this person's healing, for all of these people's healing. You know, the line to meet St. Andre of Montreal was getting longer and longer. People were coming to meet the doorkeeper himself, not to ask the doorkeeper to point us to other people in the congregation, but they came to meet the doorkeeper. They loved his sense of simplicity and humility and his holiness. Indeed, he never took any glory for himself, but he gave all glory, honor and thanksgiving to Jesus Christ and to the intercessions of Saint Joseph. And he used to always say this whenever people asked him about these miraculous healings or in fact put him to the test the diocesan authorities, etc., his superiors within the congregation, he simply replied this, I do not cure. He always said, St. Joseph cures. I do not cure, St. Joseph cures. And friends, by the point of his death, it is recorded that he received 80,000 letters each year, which were basically prayer requests asking for healing through his intercession. St. Andre of Montreal was instrumental. St. Andre of Montreal, in his great devotion to St. Joseph, in his great love for Jesus, had this conviction at one point of time to build a chapel dedicated to St. Joseph. Therefore, he went and spoke to the Archbishop of Montreal to get permission to build this chapel. And to build this chapel not anywhere but on a mountain near the college where he was performing his duties as a doorkeeper. In fact, he was more than just a doorkeeper. He was God's doorkeeper. Back to this bid to build a chapel. The Archbishop basically refused to go into debt because the diocese was not going through a very good time in terms of finances. So he gave permission to St. Andre of Montreal to build as long as he could raise the funds and not go into debt himself. So St. Andre started doing this in small ways. He started to build the chapel in very small ways. He started to raise funds. The first funds which he raised were basically the funds he collected from the haircuts that he gave the students at the college. However, this was not enough. He only had a few hundred dollars. How on earth would you expect to build an entire chapel with only a few hundred dollars? Ultimately, he took that few hundred dollars and he just started he just built what he could with that few hundred dollars. He built a small wooden shelter that was only about 15 by 18 feet. He kept collecting these funds and money and he went back year after year or a couple of years after a couple of years to request more building. And you know, the Archbishop was kind of put off by this guy's consistency and asked him, did you receive some sort of vision from St. Joseph or are people pressuring you into doing this? And this humble saint simply replied, It is none of that, my lordship, but merely I have this devotion to St. Joseph and he is guiding me in this mission. Friends, to make a long story short, the chapel was built, although St. Audrey of Montreal did not live to see it himself. He was instrumental in the building of the chapel. The cost was way beyond his means at that point of time. But with the few hundred that he received, he took it and he built the foundations a bit by bit. Friends, in the kingdom of God, God is often asking us to just start building with whatever we have. Oftentimes, we give ourselves the excuse, I will do this when I have enough resources. I will do this when I know enough. I will do this when I am ready. Friends, we will never be 100% ready till the day we die. Till the day we die, we will never ever be 100% ready. God asks us, each of us, to just step up and show up when He asks each of us to evangelize in His name, to build His kingdom here on earth. 
whether to build a church physically or spiritually, God asks you and me to just start small, to start with what we have and to build on that. St. Andre was willing to start with what he had. He did not wait to gather everything, but he just started with what he had. So yes, friends, such was his devotion to St. Joseph that he wanted to build a chapel dedicated to St. Joseph. And through his ministry as a doorkeeper, as a builder in that sense, he ultimately pointed thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands upon tens of thousands. And by today, friends, he ultimately led millions upon millions of souls back to Jesus Christ through St. Joseph. So friends, on that note, on that note of St. Andre of Montreal's great devotion to St. Joseph, his role as God's doorkeeper, listening to the people that came to him, preaching to them the love of Jesus Christ, leading them in simple times of prayer that turned out to be miraculous and life-changing. Friends, let us imitate St. Andre of Montreal. Let us be faithful in the small things and allow God to meet us halfway with his supernatural divine intervention. Let us pray. St. Andre of Montreal, you had a great mission to preach to God's people who came to the college where you were performing your duty as a doorkeeper. Help us as well to point others to Jesus. As a doorkeeper, many people came to see you ultimately, to ask you for healing, to ask you for guidance, to ask you for direction. But you pointed all of them to Jesus Christ. You gave all glory to God. And you pointed them to the guidance and the direction of St. Joseph, the patriarch of patriarchs, the father of fathers, the great spiritual father that we have in our life. St. Andre of Montreal, you were faithful in the small things, and because you were faithful in the small things, in your duty as a doorkeeper, God opened up a wonderful ministry of counseling and healing for you. And God opened up a wonderful ministry for you to build a literal chapel, a physical chapel dedicated to his own foster father, St. Joseph. Help us to be faithful in the small things in our lives that Jesus promises in our hearts to carry out. Let us never fall into the temptations that we can only do the will of God when we are 100% ready, that we have all the resources, but help us to just start with what we have to build in the kingdom of God, to sow into the kingdom of God to ensure that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. St. Joseph, as we close this series of saints dedicated to you, I ask that you raise us up to be great saints as well, that you raise us up to rise unto great levels of sanctity in Christ Jesus, just as you led these various saints to rise unto sainthood in your son Jesus. Lead each one of us who are listening and viewing right now, who are praying to your intercessions, who are seeking your intercessions right now. Raise us to great levels of sainthood as well so that we can give your son Jesus not only glory but the greatest glory possible. Saint Joseph, help us to be obedient to your son. Help us to be humble. Help us to be brave. Help us to rise up with heroic virtue to do what God is calling us to do. Help us to rise up with heroic virtue in the small and the big things, St. Joseph. We seek your intercessions. We seek your care. And from today onwards, St. Joseph, take us under your wings as your spiritual sons and daughters. That we may bring Jesus to all the people that we come across in our lives. That we will prophesy in the streets. That we evangelize to the people that we see. Bringing them closer and closer to your son, Jesus. Just like you always did in your role as the foster father of Jesus. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Andre of Montreal, pray for us. Amen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, Christ, before I end, I'd like to ask all of you who are viewing right now to just click on the link below leading the city on a hill design shop or click on the, or just scan this QR code which should be somewhere here to access the website. City on a Hill is run by Amanda Lee, who has been gracious in designing all of these illustrations of saints. Isn't this illustration just so beautiful? Saint Andre of Montreal, Saint Joseph, and the baby Jesus. Friends, there are many more illustrations of saints available as stickers, available as prints, and other Catholic merchandise on her website, on her online shop. So I encourage all of you to click on it 
to scan the QR code, access a website, and to purchase this Catholic merchandise, which can be used as tools of evangelization. So that you and I can be like St. Montreal, effective doorkeepers, leading others who come to visit the colleges that we are performing our duty as doorkeepers and leading them ultimately to Jesus. With these tools of evangelization, these stickers, these prints, these cards, etc., we can open the door for others to ask us about Jesus Christ and we can explain it to them with conviction, friends. So I ask all of you to access this website and if you are going to buy something, I ask that you use the coupon code MWTS5. So for all viewers of Midweek with the Saints, City on a Hill has been gracious and generous in granting each of us a 5% discount of our total order. So friends, that is all for this week. And uh, just a gentle reminder yet again, next week there will be no episodes uploaded. We will see you two weeks from today. Until then, God bless.